Hello. We have already discussed about ionic bonds in solid. Now we are going to discuss about the covalent bonds. So what are the covalent bonds? Where do we find covalent bonds? The covalent bond is formed by sharing electrons between two atoms and this is found in many molecules and many solids. For example, in case of hydrogen molecule, we have H2. So two hydrogen atoms come close to each other. Each hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron and those electrons are shared between both atoms to form this H2 molecule. Now why is this electron shared and why that helps forming a molecule that means uh, lowering the energy of the entire system that's something we need to understand. Similar example is nitrogen molecule, oxygen molecule or for example solid form of carbon say graphite or diamond whatever diamond is a good example so here uh, the bond between two carbon atoms is so strong that it is comparable to that of sodium chloride that means the bond of a covalent uh, compound is quite strong it's not at all weak there is no electrostatic interaction just by sharing electrons they form this kind of a strong bond in few cases not always but the bond is in general quite strong. Always the bond is quite strong. The diamond is one of the highest strength examples. That's what uh, we can say. Now we want to understand how this electron is shared. These electrons are shared and how that lowers the energy of the entire system. So we want to understand covalent bonding in terms of mathematics. So then we need to form a model for simplicity instead of a solid let us consider a homonuclear diatomic molecule whatever physics we understand for this is valid for uh, solid as well but for solid this uh, analysis would be a bit cumbersome so in order to avoid that we analyze a homonuclear diatomic molecule and we will have that insight that can be used in solid as well so let's consider for the simplicity the simplest homonuclear diatomic molecule that's H2 molecule and can we solve the corresponding Schrodinger equation to find the quantum states if we write down the Schrodinger equation, then there would be, along with other terms, repulsion between two electrons, the Coulomb repulsion between two electrons. And that's going to make our life miserable, actually. So we cannot really calculate that. Rather, uh, we can do a linear combination of atomic orbitals and try to develop a useful insight into the problem. So let us say psi represents the molecular state psi is the elect electronic state one electron state with actually in the molecule if we consider this then we would need a basis to expand psi and if we consider formation of H2 molecule by bringing two hydrogen atoms close together then if we write one this state as the electronic state of the first hydro hydrogen atom And similarly to this would be the electronic state of the second hydrogen atom. 
and in this basis we would like to expand psi we can do a reasonable job with this representation now these states 1 and 2 these correspond to isolated hydrogen atoms not the molecule and psi corresponds to one electron state but in the molecule since we are interested in the ground state of the molecule we will assume that 1 and 2 these states are the ground states of the corresponding atom that is 1s states in case of hydrogen atom and if the energy of these electrons in the hydrogen atom be represented as epsilon so this is the energy atomic energy of those electrons If we have small h1 and small h2, small h, uh, so small h1 and small h2 are the Hamiltonians of atom 1 and atom 2. We are putting small h because capital H is reserved for hydrogen, representing hydrogen. So small h represents the Hamiltonian in this case. So from our definition, we can write that h1 acting on 1 would give us epsilon 1 similarly h2 acting on 2 would give us epsilon 2 now we make two assumptions in the first assumption we assume that the two basis states 1 and 2 they form an adequate basis adequate basis set in which the ground state of the molecule psi can be expanded so you don't we are assuming that we don't need any other state to make the linear combination make the expansion for psi that means this set of 1 and 2 this gives us an adequate basis state basis set this is our first assumption and the second assumption is that we assume 1 and 2 to be orthonormal that means if we have a state i and j then the inner product between them is Kronecker delta ij this is the orthonormality condition so uh, for 1 and 2 we assume orthonormality condition with this assumption our work becomes simpler and that's the reason we make this assumption even without making this assumption we can in principle solve the problem but then uh, working it out would be more cumbersome okay now making these two assumptions from uh, assumption one we can write psi expand psi as c1 1 plus c2 2 where c1 and c2 are coefficients to the basis states in general these are complex numbers and from assumption 2 we can write c1 because of orthonormality it can be represented as psi projected onto 1 similarly c2 can be written as c1 
psi projected onto 2 from 1 and the orthonormality condition you can easily understand that this would be the case. Now we need to find C1, C2 and the energy eigenvalues of the molecule. So the energy eigenvalues of the molecule we write as E. The, uh, let's start with the time independent Schrodinger equation. If the molecular Hamiltonian is small h, then h psi that equals E psi. This is the time independent Schrodinger equation for the molecule. And with the help of this expansion here, we can write that H acting on C1, 1 plus C2, 2. That gives us E C1 1 plus C2 2. This is what we obtain. Now if we want to solve this Schrodinger equation, we project this equation onto states 1 and 2. What do we mean by doing that? Consider this equation and Take from the left side a bra state 1 and project this equation onto that and uh, in the next step a bra state 2 and project this equation onto that. So we do this 1 H C1 1 plus C2 2 this quantity equals 1 e c1 1 plus c2 2 and for 2 this is 2 h c1 1 plus c2 2 equals 2 e c1 1 plus c2 2 this is what we have now if we have something like i h j we will denote this kind of a matrix element as h subscripts ij this is our convention to follow with this we can write the equations that we have found earlier as e not c1 where did we get e not from we will see that later let me write this first plus h1 2 c2 equals e c1 h2 1 c1 plus e naught once again e naught c2 equals e c2 so we have used the orthonormality of the basis set to eliminate the other terms so this is all we have and we have considered 1 h 1 this is h 1 1 basically equals 2 h 2 that is equals e naught so here 
H is the molecular Hamiltonian, not the atomic Hamiltonian. So this E naught is not equal to epsilon. And so our H11 and H22, these quantities are called the on-site matrix element. This operation is on one site, one hydrogen atom. That's the reason it's called on-site matrix element and H12, H21, these are hopping matrix elements. Why these are called hopping matrix elements? We will un understand that later. So this, these equations that we have that may be represented in a matrix form and to determine the non-trivial solution for C1 and C2, we will need the secular determinant to be zero. That means we will require E0 minus E H12 H21 E0 minus E the determinant of that equals 0 and that means we get a quadratic equation from this E squared minus twice E0 E plus E naught squared minus H12 H21. This quantity equals 0. And since the Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator, we must have H12 equals H21 complex conjugate. This is something we must have. Now, if we assume that we have considered only real orbitals, real atomic orbitals in this situation, that is like 1s orbitals, then H12 becomes real and H21 also becomes real. So, uh, H21 complex conjugate is H21 itself, which is equal to H12. And let's call that another real number beta, which would be handy for writing. So the solution to this quadratic equation here would be one solution we are calling E subscript B that is E naught plus beta and the other solution E subscript A is E naught minus beta. This is the solution for the eigenvalues. How about the eigenstates? The normalized state vector corresponding to EB would be given as psi B. B stands for bonding and A stands for antibonding. We will realize their meaning later on. So psi b is given as 1 over square root 2, 1 plus 2 and the one corresponding to ea that is psi a, psi a can be given as 1 over square root 2, 1 minus 